Let's go for it. Okay. <laughs> This KHQA 70 Storm Team Update is brought to you by First Bankers Trust. There's going to be plenty of rain chances for your week ahead.
This is KHQA News at 10. It's your news now. This is KHQA News at 10. It's your news now.
for a community to um, to support an agency that runs strictly on donations and staffed exclusively by volunteers is a, an amazing feat. Not only are we surviving, but we're thriving. We're hoping uh, all the same from last year and, and even more. So we're really hoping people will come out and enjoy it. It's going to be a beautiful season. Uh, lots of great weather, lots of great skating. Rain continues to pound an already battered Colorado as more evacuations continue. I'm Adriana Diaz in Longmont, Colorado with the details coming up. You're watching KHQA News at 10. It's your news now. Heavy rain grounded helicopter. You're watching KHQA News at 10. It's your news now. It'll stay there forever. Duct tape. If you ignore code violations in your home, you might find that you face financial fines as well as legal ramifications, so it's really important that you bring things up to code when you discover them. Now, from across the Tri-States, this is KHQA Sports.
Ten fifty. This jacket is so big on me that it looks kind of like a bathrobe. Wreck me, you wreck me. Hear that, Jordan? We're singing a little, uh, a little Hannah Montana for you. <laughs> I would lick a sledgehammer for you, but I don't have one. <laughs> I think it'd be pretty appropriate. <laughs> they have so many complaints about things like that. <laughs> Do you think prudish is like a language? <laughs> Prudia. <laughs> Prudlandia. <laughs> what? Highest rating is from the Ku Klux Klan, and it says, "No black people in this video." I approve. Oh God. The, the the page is literally Ku Klux Klan member. Wow. <laughs> and that's the one that probably that got all the upvotes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, not like something about her being naked.
This is KHQA News at 10. It's your news now. A body was found in the Mississippi River and is under investigation. Good evening and thanks for joining us for KHQA News at 10. I'm Jeff Monlock. According to Marion County Sheriff Jimmy Shin, the body was found south of Hannibal near the cement plant. An autopsy is scheduled for tomorrow to help determine the cause and help identify the body. Shin says the body appears to have been in water for some time, uh, some period of time. The Missouri State Highway Patrol is assisting in the investigation efforts. We will keep you updated as information becomes available. Now, the 18-year-old man who faced charges involving arson of the former Sprouts Inn building pleaded guilty Friday morning. According to the Adams County Circuit Clerk's Office, Alex Frieden appeared in court at 9.15 on Friday morning, and his sentencing will take place on October 21st at 2.15 p.m. Sprouts Inn reopened its doors earlier this month. A female Western Illinois student says that she was a victim of sexual assault earlier this morning. According to the Campus Office of Public Safety, the student reported that around midnight, she was approached from, approached from behind while by a white male and a black male. Reports say that she was walking down the steps in between the University Union and Knobloch Hall when approached. The suspects are described as slim with a muscular build in between 6 feet and 6 foot 3 in height. No weapons were reported at the incident and it is currently under investigation. If you know any information involving the incident, contact the WIU Office of Public Safety. The Adams County Sheriff's Office is investigating a fatal rollover at the, and the accident happened around 5 this afternoon on County Road North 1500th Avenue. The Adams County Sheriff Brent Fisher says the driver lost control of the vehicle overturning several times after leaving the roadway. The driver was ejected from the vehicle and we'll keep you updated with that as information becomes available to us. Now, it was a little bit different weather than we're used to today. I say it seemed a little wet out there. Is this going to continue on, or was that just kind of like something we didn't know and it just was here for a little bit? Or? Well, you know, that rain falling from the sky was kind of a little unusual. We haven't seen it in a while, but it looks like it is here to stay. When you take a look at the radar, you can see even now there is plenty of rain going on out there across the tri-states. You can see that it's kind of scooping over Quincy and kind of heading off to the south around Springfield and St. Louis. So looks like about just about everywhere kind of in the mid, uh, Midwest right now we're seeing rain we're experiencing rain and it is great. We still have some rain coming tonight possibly about 20% chance of rain that we're going to be seeing maybe around midnight and 2 a.m. at least but currently right now in Quincy at the Quincy Regional Airport it's 62 degrees and there's a little bit of a I call it a drizzle because it's not a heavy rain and it's not exactly, you know, the, the most pressing rain in the world, but it is still out there. So I like to, you know, put a little, little rain icon out there just to recognize that the rain is there because I'm just so grateful that the rain is kind of here because woo, we desperately need it. You've got a little bit of a wind out there. It's a little breezy. When we take a look at the weather headlines, though, plenty of rain chances this week. You've got different rain chances really throughout the week, but a pleasant week nonetheless ahead. We've got really nice temperatures and pleasant evenings, which is going to be great. And... I don't know if you want to, you know, look at it as a sad thing, but last week of summer that you need to get in and how ironic it's last week of summer and you've got plenty of rain chances. So we're going to be talking about that more in Maine weather. Jeff. Thanks, Megan. A Quincy organization celebrated the big four zero today at the Knights of Columbus. Birthright was in, in Quincy, started about 40 years ago and has grown significantly. It is an international organization that began in Toronto, Canada, and the volunteers who started the Quincy chapter spoke about spoke at the celebration today. Around 125 people attended the event and received a free lunch buffet. Birthright clients also gave testimonies in front of the group. For a community to, um, to support an agency that runs strictly on donations and staffed exclusively by volunteers is a, an amazing feat. Not only are we surviving, but we're thriving. Adam says they have 30 active volunteers at Birthright that are looking for, always looking for more ways to help. Keokuk lost one of its own last night. Former Mayor David Gutchell passed away after a long fight with cancer. Current Mayor Tom Marion says Gutchell was taken to the ICU on Friday for a respiratory problem. He says that he is a great friend of his, and he's still unsure of the arrangements for his funeral, but says that the city offices will close on that day so they can attend. Gutchell served as mayor from 2001 to 2009. Some of his accomplishments include the addition of the Keokuk Veterans Memorial and the Rand Park Pavilion. And according to Tri-States Radio, the cause of the death is unknown at this time, but he was diagnosed with cancer in 2005. 
The city of industry today played host to a benefit for some special causes. For those hosting this benefit, it was a special sight to see the people that came out to support it. It's all to help the, support the Rushville Industry School Music Fund and Loaves and Fishes Food Pantry. The Rushville Industry High School Band plans to take a trip to Branson, Missouri in 2014. The band director at the high school is excited to see the money and donated instruments put to good use. If you look around, you can see that a lot of the music programs in this area are floundering. Um, they're floundering financially, but also numbers-wise with the pets. Um, it's hard to get the students involved, but if you have the proper equipment, then that just makes it that much easier. If you'd like to learn more about the supporting these two organizations, you can visit our website at connecttristates.com. Quincy's own artificial ice rink is set to be around for at least three more winters. After last, last week's Quincy Park District meeting, River Skate was given a three-year contract. The rink will be up and ready and for action again this winter. Co-owner Marion Dye says there are new things to look forward to this year, but you'll have to wait to see them. They will once again have the Santa Skate event and the Princesses and Pirates event. They also offer tips on how to get started with your skating life. And Dye hopes that the years down the line that they can expand the size of the rink. We're hoping uh, all the same from last year and, and even more. So we're really hoping people will come out and enjoy it. It's going to be a beautiful season. Uh, lots of great weather, lots of great skating. The River Skate Ice Rink opens up again on November 1st, so be prepared to lace them up. Rain continues to pound an already battered Colorado as more evacuations continue. I'm Adriana Diaz in Longmont, Colorado with the details coming up. That's all right. It's okay. You're watching KHQA News at 10 with Jeff Mondlock and Megan Townley with your seven storm team forecast. This is KHQA. It's your news now. More bad weather is hampering search and rescue efforts in Colorado. The National Guard has rescued more than 2,000 people, but there are still hundreds of people unaccounted for days after the historic flooding. Adriana Diaz is in Longmont, Colorado with the latest. Heavy rain grounded helicopters used to rescue people trapped in Rocky Mountain foothill communities cut off by floodwaters. 
But ground searches continued. National Guard troops drove Christy Peak and her daughter Jasmine out of Lyons Sunday. Hundreds of people are unaccounted for after torrential rain last week caused historic flooding. People searching for loved ones are coming to evacuation centers like this one. They're leaving messages on boards hoping for any word on the fate of their family members and friends. Sandy Sharp and Bernard Morse escaped the flooding in Lyons and came to check in. Larimer County was hit hard. Sheriff Justin Smith got a first-hand look at the devastation in his communities. Roads are washed out and there's debris everywhere, but Smith says people are determined to rebound quickly. Four people are confirmed dead in the flooding. Two more are presumed dead after their homes were washed away. And authorities say they expect the death toll to rise as they reach more areas cut off because of the floodwaters. Well, it looks like we have some more rain chances in the forecast, but what does that mean for the end of your work week? You'll find out next coming up. Uh, the national <laughs> I apparently didn't give a good enough look at it because they didn't put any audio in. <laughs> no, that's forever. show is falling apart. <laughs> it's Sunday. I hope no one's watching. Well, everyone's watching that game. You're watching KHQA News at 10. It's your news now. Follow the rules of risk paying the price. That's especially true when planning a home improvement project, big or small. In today's Angie's List report, we tell you why you shouldn't ignore a code violation. Any new renovation work must meet current code at the time it is being performed. Code violations often involve electrical, plumbing, or structural issues that pose some sort of safety hazard. Ignoring a code violation could be an expensive mistake. If you ignore code violations in your home, you might find that you face financial fines as well as legal ramifications, so it's really important that you bring things up to code when you discover them. If something is code when you put it in and then code changes, uh, you don't have time. You don't have to bring it up in the code, though it might still be a good idea to from a safety standpoint. Also, many homeowners insurance policies won't cover damage or loss to an area that is found not to be up to the current code if that area is supposed to be. So read your policy and talk to your agent. Well, good evening, Tri-States, and 
happy Sunday to you. We're going to see a beautiful, uh, really nice, I think, start to your work week tomorrow. We're taking a look at the Sleep Tight Sky Cam here at 36 and Broadway in Quincy. And I'm not sure if you can see any drizzle out there. That's kind of what I call it earlier. It's not heavy rain. It's not really light rain. It's kind of like a drizzle. And so there was kind of some going on earlier this evening when I was uh, popping around the studio. And so I thought, well, maybe it's drizzling out here. I'm excited about it. We took a look at the weather graphics though. You can see that this temperature has been very consistent for our area. We're kind of sitting in the 60s and 50s for our evenings and that's what a lot of uh, other states are too. You can see that Des Moines is sitting at 65. You've got Kansas City at uh, 65 and all the way over here in Denver, you've got 54. So right now everyone's kind of in that really nice cool down stage that we are all probably really enjoying. We're getting out of those hot, hot temperatures where the evenings used to be in maybe the 70s, possibly even in the 80s, and we're moving to really nice temperatures. When we take a current temperature uh, look for the tri-states, you can see that Quincy's at 61, you've got Macomb at 62, Fort Madison at 61, and we've got down south Hannibal at 63 and Pittsfield at 62. So again, really nice temperatures, very cool evenings. Almost need a jacket. That, you know, that's funny to say because soon we're not gonna be wanting a jacket. You're gonna be wanting a heavy sweater or a coat, but I won't jinx it yet because that's not what we have yet. We do have some rain currently. Look at that. You can kind of see a little bit of uh, <laughs> lots and lots of green stuff. And that is very, very good because when we take a closer look, you can see that it's still kind of hitting over the tri-states kind of swooping in and going down south to Springfield in the kind of St. Louis area. So right now it looks like a lot of other people are currently getting rain just like us. So for Quincy tonight, you're going to be sitting at 56 possible rain chances. And when I mean by tonight, it's actually going to be really early in the morning, possibly between midnight and 2 a.m. You've got about a 20% chance. It's small, but I'm rooting for it because I think there's nothing better than sleeping while it's raining outside. It's one of my favorite things. You're going to have a mostly cloudy evening though and winds out of the northeast from 5 to 10. So for your Quincy tomorrow, look at that high. You haven't seen probably a 70 for your high for the day in a while. So get used to those temperatures because they are on, they're just kind of coming right in and they're going to stay here, especially for your last week of summer. It's very funny. It's going to have a very uh, partly sunny day for your Quincy tomorrow. Some possible late showers in Monday evening as well, kind of hitting you right around the 1 a.m. region kind of those overnight showers. It's going to be breezy tomorrow as well. You've got winds out of the east from 10 to 20 miles per hour, so maybe not the best time to wear a dress or a skirt. It's going to be a little bit of a breezy day. At least for your three-day forecast, you can see Monday, partly sunny, mostly sunny. And then for Tuesday and Wednesday, you've got some more rain chances. Wednesday is going to get up to 83, which is going to be nice because with that rain, it kind of brings a more cooler temperature. And for Thursday, you've got your high for the week, which is 86. And again, Thursday has another chance for rain. So again, more chances for rain means kind of a cooler down and I'm excited about it. I love the rain and I know plenty of people do too. I was talking on Facebook with some people and they said, I'm fine with the rain, but I'm not really looking forward to, you know, the cooler temperatures that fall brings. Some people said, no, let's keep summer. And then someone said, well, if we can move into fall, skip winter and then just go right into spring, they'd be okay with that too. And I have to say, I might agree with them. I love Christmas, but sometimes snow can... <laughs> a warm a Christmas little... wouldn't be too bad, I suppose. It, but these 70 yeah. degree temperatures, that's going to be a shock for some people. Oh, absolutely. I think every time I've been walking outside, I go, ooh, I kind of like shudder a little because I'm used to the hot, hot temperatures from last week. But I think we will all be able to adjust because I think these nice temperatures that we're going to be having this week is going to be what we need to kind of get out of that summer mode. I think we're ready for fall. Oh, I am. I'm so ready for fall. I want to I wanna rake up some leaves and, and jump in them. I'm kind of in that fall mood. Wonderful. Well, coming up in sports, week two of NFL action is in full swing, and we have some, a look at the Bears, Chiefs, and Rams football after the break.
Now, from across the Tri-State, this is KHQA Sports. Now, it's only week two, but I know we have some happy campers out there when it comes to NFL football. We have a 2-0 Bears team, a 2-0 Chiefs team. What better start can you look for? Why don't we go ahead and look into the NFC North as the Bears welcome the Vikings onto their turf today. If you look here, it was a little bit of a rough start for the Bears as the Vikings own Cordell. A Cor Cordarell, I'm sorry, Patterson had a 105 kickoff yard kickoff return for a touchdown. It's hard to, to see something like that happen right in the beginning of the game. I know the Bears had a, things like that happen back when Devin Hester was really on his game. But now we look over here to the Bears doing what I think the best method in football is. Use your tight end as they give the ball to Bennett for a touchdown to tie it up 7-7. Seven to seven. Now why don't we go ahead and look over here into a little bit later into the game. Here we have Jay Cutler steps back. Looks for his open man. Who does he go to but none other than Brandon Marshall, the one he loves to use, a little bit of an old Denver connection there. Brandon Marshall gets all of a sudden the Bears are up 14 to 7 up against the Vikings. Now we're going to head into the second quarter here. And this is a little bit of a bad play on Jay Cutler's part. It's hard to hold on to that ball as you see a user scoop and score as a good friend of mine used to say back in the video game days when we'd be playing. As the Vikings go ahead and get another touchdown, a 61-yard fumble recovery. That is something that's almost devastating, but the Bears didn't let it get to them. As they had Christian Ponder backs up, throws it. What do you know? Why don't you, what's the, what better way to get back at a team for getting a, a fumble recovery touchdown than getting an interception, a pick six? The Bears all of a sudden are up once again 21-14. Now we're into the fourth quarter. It was a close game, and the Bears have had a couple of close games here. What do you know? Using the tight end, like I said earlier, Bears win it. Bears end up winning the game, 31-30. to Great game. Great game for me as a Bears fan. Why don't we go ahead and go to the Chiefs game? Not many games I have seen have started like this. I guess they're welcoming the Cowboys in with, a little, with their cheerleaders. However, Alex Smith in the first quarter backs up, gives it to Jamal Charles, the one that everybody's always wanting to see out in Kansas City. is not hurt. He's ready to play. You can tell by the way he goes ahead and gets that ball into the end zone. But that doesn't stop Tony Romo from getting his own little action in here as he throws to Des Bryant, somebody that everybody's been waiting to see blow up this year. And Des Bryant finally gives it, gives the fans what they're looking for, putting the game 10 to 7 Dallas. However, Alex Smith doesn't let that go unaccounted for as Dwayne Bow takes one in. Chiefs are up once again, 14 to 13. And now we're into the third quarter. Tony Romo backs it out of the pocket. What a, oh, that is a tough thing right there when Tony Romo loses the ball, stripped. Chiefs recover it. A lot of Chiefs fans around here. I know they're excited to see that. Chiefs ball. And now we go ahead and go into the fourth quarter where we had a, a big field goal attempt here. 53-yarder just to keep the game even, even close. However, Kansas City still wins it after, after Dallas gets that field goal. Kansas City wins it 17-16. to now why don't we go ahead and go into the next game here, the Rams versus the Falcons. Now this first play is a little bit bittersweet for a couple of the Rams fans around here, I can only imagine, as Steven Jackson, a former Ram great, goes ahead and puts a pounding on his team here, putting the ball right into the end zone in the first quarter, 7 to nothing Falcons. Now I know there are a lot of Rams fans that miss him, however, it was probably needed. Falcons are using him well. Now why don't we go ahead and look at Matt Ryan throwing to Julio Jones, former Alabama great, taking this one all the way down the field, 81-yard touchdown pass, 14-0 Falcons. I'm sorry, Rams fans, it's going a little bit poorly for you right now, but Sam Bradford using the rookie right off the bat. Got to get as much use out of Tavon Austin as you can as the season starts. Make sure that people know that he is your target to use. 24-10, Falcons are still up. Going into the fourth quarter, we have Jason's. We have a big, big time run here. Jason Snelling running it in, 11-yard 11 11 touchdown run, putting the Falcons up 31 to 17. Falcons end up winning this one, 31 to 24. Bit of a beat down on the Rams. Well, Rams kept it close, so in the end there, and that's what's most important around here. Why don't we go ahead and look at some NCAA soccer? I know Quincy University was coming off a tough loss on the football field yesterday, but they had a great win on the soccer field here as Quincy U beat Maryville with Jody. Ch Chappie winning, having her 31st career shutout. Now that's very important to note. I mean, that's a quite a bit of shutouts. Now, when we go ahead and look into the MLB here, where the Cardinals are won this one by a big margin. <laughs> I think the Mariners are a little bit ashamed after this one, 12 to two. And then when we go ahead and look on the other side of the lead, as the Cubs are battling basically for last place in their division to get out of there, it looks a little unlikely. The Pirates and the Cardinals, however, are still tied for first place in their division. But coming up after the break, we'll go ahead and give you one last look at, at weather for the night.
I think so. Okay. What time do we actually come back, or what time are we out? 2023 is when we're out. Jordan, do I need to move? No. Is she in the way? No? Okay, you're good. Last night's Powerball once again came up empty on a big winner, and that means that you still have a chance to hit it big and win the jackpot. Now, the jackpot is up to now around $400 million, and the numbers that were drawn last night were 1, 17, 25, 37, 44, and Powerball 20. If you won, if won last night, the pot would have been at $317 million, but the next drawing will be held on Wednesday, so make sure to get your tickets. I know I'm going to have to go get my tickets. I usually don't tempt fate with that, but I think it's the right idea to get out there with oh, that much money. Uh, you know, I think with that much money, you might as well play your luck. And, you know, I think speaking of luck, you have a very lucky week ahead of you, I'd say, because you take a look at the weather, plenty of rain, but you've also got some really nice temperatures. The week's highest is going to be 86. So I think overall, Jeff, this is looking to be a very great week for people who love rain, like myself. So I think overall, it's looking to be a very great week. Wonderful. Well, thanks for watching KHQA News at 10. Make sure to tune in in the morning and wake up with KHQA this morning. Good night, everyone.